بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم one time there was i don't know how many of you have heard of a famous scholar in india he's also a big sheikh in tasawuf as well mawlana ashraf ashraf ali thanawi very famous so one time he he actually used to have a place where his students used to come and gather his students of the ones who used to learn dhikr from him and one time one of one person came to him and they said to him he was actually a farmer this person who came to him he was somebody who spent a lot of time on the farm he used to plant crops he used to spend a lot of time with animals and he came to him and he said you know to mawlana ashri tanwi may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his mercy upon his grave that i'm having trouble in my relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i want to take you as my teacher to help me develop my dhikr and my adhkar and my akhlaq etc so mawlana shaitan we said okay that's fine so he took him as a student and he assigned him certain they could do do these different they could when you go home and then report back to me and let me know how you, how it's affecting you if it's having any effect on you so that person he was a dihati in the you know do you in or do you come a dihati in arabic or he was somebody who or in english he was somebody who spent a lot of time on the farm he was a villager almost so that person went and that person did all the different they could that he was told to do then he came back and he told mawlana ashri tanwi sahab may allah rahmatullah alay that you know i'm doing this but it's not having any effect it's not changing me i'm still so distracted i'm thinking about my family i'm thinking about my farm i'm thinking about the animals that i have to take care of i'm thinking about so many other things and i can't focus on my zikr i can't focus on my remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so mawlana shri tanwi sahab said to him that i want to ask you a question i want you to tell me out of every single thing in the world what do you love more most what's the thing that really really attracts your desire really really occupies your mind when you think about it so he was a farmer so he said well a black bull when i think about the black bull it's such a beautiful animal and i have so many black bulls that i take care of and there's so many benefits to these black bull and i really really just love the black bull so mawlana shaitan sahab said Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to stay in my khanaka for a while. Khanaka means place where he used to teach his students. It's like a madrasa but it's a madrasa for his ikhwan. You can say it that way. So he said I want you to stay in my khanaka and I'm going to assign you a new dhikr. Your dhikr is going to be that you sit in the corner of a room in this room over here and I just want you to reflect on black bulls. Just think about black bulls all day. So all you're going to do is sit down and think about the black bull and what does it look like and how does it walk and all the different benefits of the black bull. So he said okay. So he started sitting down and a few days passed and he kept doing this zikr every single day. He would sit down and he would just reflect on the black bull. So then what happened was one day all the people were leaving from the from the room and he just st- stood in front of the door. and everybody said come on what are you waiting for go through the door I and mean, he was walking the door and people were trying to get through the door and they said well, what are you doing and he said I-, i can't get through because my horns my horns there's not enough space in the door for my horns so then the, the students were very c- confused that what is this guy talking about he doesn't have any horns so they went and they complained to mawlana ashri tanwi sahab and he said good he's focused now then he called that man back and he said now that you've finish yourself thinking about the black bull now i want you to do this that god only told him la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah la ilaha illallah and the idea was and then he explained to all the students that 
see this person? He was so distracted. He was thinking about his family. He was thinking about his job. He was thinking about his animals. He was thinking about his crops. He was thinking about so many other things. So what I did was I told him to think about the black bull because that took away everything except for one thing. Meaning then he stopped thinking about his family. He stopped thinking about all these things. Meaning he used it as a step to get him to remember Allah. So he, because that was the thing he could focus on easily. So then what happened was, once he started thinking about the black bull and he got so into it that he started thinking he himself is a bull, then I gave him the dhikr of la ilaha illallah, and then it was easy for him, because he, he didn't have anything on his mind anymore except for one thing, the black bull. He didn't have his work and his family. He had already concentrated himself into this one thing. So then I told him, now, now do the dhikr of la ilaha illallah, and then that person made very, very quick progress. Because it's easy to sacrifice one thing and then focus yourself on something else, but to get yourself gathered from all the distractions of the world is much more difficult. So why am I telling you this story? And the reason is because in America, okay, so the black bull is the story of that particular person. That's his background. That was that person's background. That's what he needed to do. Now, we're not going to sit and think about black bulls, but I want everyone to understand, because 90% of you, 95% of you are involved in some sort of learning. So some of you are doing Arabic, some of you are doing fiqh, some of you are doing Qur'an, tafsir, hadith, etc. And I think it's very, very important to understand why you're doing this. Now there's, one, there's two aspects to every single individual in this room. One is, why am I teaching them? All right? And the second is, why are they learning it? So there's two individual things. So I'll tell you why I'm teaching you guys, and you have to decide why you're learning it. For us, because of the background that we came from, and because of the way we grew up, we have many, many distractions in our lives. But we grew up in a very academic environment. Meaning, our black bull is kind of academics. So the thing that we're able to focus on is academics. Now, we have a hundred things. We have football in our minds. We have sports in our minds. We have family in our minds. We have so many other things in our minds. But if you tell the average person who grew up here, who spent some time in America, that I'll teach you Arabic, even if the guy doesn't pray, he'll say, I'll come and study Arabic. He'll say that. I mean, I talk to countless people. They say they don't even pray. They don't even care about coming to the masjid. They don't care about anything. But you say to them, I'll teach you Arabic, they're ready to jump up and learn Arabic. Or they're ready to learn Hadith or Fiqh or something like that. Because that's just our background. We're very academic. We grew up in a very academic background. But that's not the goal. And this should be understood by everyone. The goal is Allah. Nobody on the Day of Judgment is going to ask you, tell me fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. That's not going to be the, or tell me alif ba'ta. That's not going to be the way that you're going to get judged on the Day of Judgment. You're going to get judged by what's in your heart by the sincerity of your intentions, by your taqwa, by your istiqam ala sharia, and by your submission to the sunnah. These are the things that, are going to, that, are going, that you're going to be judged by. This Arabic is an excuse. The Arabic is an excuse to get you in the masjid five times a day, or at least two times a day, when we do this at Fajr and Isha. The Arabic is an excuse so that you come to the masjid and you get the prayer. Whatever I teach you in this Arabic, or in fiqh, or anything, the amount of time that you spend in the masjid is, is countless times superior to anything that you're going to learn in these books. Anything. Plus the fact that you're getting the salah and jama'ah. That's the more important thing. That's the essence of the deen. Not books and how much did you study and what page are you on. So that's the first thing. So this is our black bull. You're, this is the thing that's going to focus you away from everything else and all the distractions that you have and get you into the masjid. But there's still a step beyond that. And the step beyond that is that you've got to become a servant. And that's what we're here to learn. Servant. How do you become a servant? How do you become a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's our goal. Service. Becoming a servant of Allah. The second thing to understand is that, so why do we do this? I mean, why do we do these books and this, different, this curriculum? The goal is not that you become a mufti or you become an alim or you become a, you know, a faqih, you're not going to. You don't have time. You're, not, you're starting in your age 30, 25, 30. Kids used to start when they were six in, in, our, in our tradition, and they still do. 
you still go to different madaris, you find six and five year old kids, they start with the, memorizing the Quran, and then they move on to all their different levels of knowledge. And plus, we do it part time. I mean, once, these people sit for seven, eight hours a day. Yet we do it for five minutes a day, plus whatever time you put in at home. So the purpose is not to become an alim. The purpose is to get the reward of becoming an alim. It's two enormously different things. If your niya is to become an alim so that you can tell people what to do and people will come to you and ask you and you can quote people in Arabic and say, look, I know this and I know that, then you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time. So you might as well stop now. So it's not the purpose is not to become an alim. The purpose is to get the reward of becoming an alim. And the reward of becoming an alim comes with just taking a, a very regular step every single day. That's all you have to do. So the five minutes that you put in is not enough to make you an alim. But the five minutes that you put in is enough to get you the reward of becoming an alim. That hopefully on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise us amongst the ulama because we followed the path of the ulama. That's the hope. And that's the desire. Everybody should have this very, very clear in your mind. Because if you're thinking that you're going to sit here and become an alim, you're deceiving yourself and you're, just, you're, going to, you're going to be wasting your time and my time. Now, yeah, the more time you put in, you will definitely learn. You will learn the meanings of the Qur'an. You will learn the meanings of the hadith. You will learn how to become a better servant. That's important. That's all important. But at the same time, you have to understand what you're doing. Why are you doing it? And so, you know, there's a lot of aspects involved. And every sing single one of us has to check our intention and check our reason of why we're doing this. But the goal in the end is Allah. It's not fa'ala. It's not yaf'alu. It's not lan yaf'ala. It's Allah. It's service of Allah. If you learn all this whole book, but your life's not changing, then you did nothing. You did nothing. This book is nothing. It's just paper and words. But if you changed your life, you see yourself coming to the masjid more. You see yourself submitting to the sharia more. You see yourself, the sunnahs are coming in your life. You see yourself taking muhasaba of your deeds. How did I treat this person five minutes ago? How did I treat all the people that I met during the day? How was I with my relationship with Allah throughout the day? If you see yourself increasing in these things, then you're benefiting. And that's the goal. That's why this, I do this in the masjid. We could have a classroom. We could go get a classroom. We could sit and do Arabic class all day. But I don't care about teaching people Arabic. I care that people come to the masjid. Yeah, if secondarily you get Arabic, you start understanding the Qur'an and the Hadith, fine, more power to you. And that's excellent. And that's a very important aspect of this deen because when you understand the Qur'an and the Hadith, you'll begin to experience this deen in a way that you can never do it without Arabic. And that's important. But don't underestimate the power of walking in the door of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't underestimate the power of praying in jama'ah. Now look, most of the Sahaba could not even read and write. That's their reality. They could not read and they could not write. They are a handful of Sahaba who knew. It was their own language who knew how to read and how to write. So it's not about reading and writing. It's about submitting. It's about becoming a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yeah, again, everything's important. I, I mean, these are all important aspects of the deen. I want you to make sure that I'm not saying, well, nobody should learn anything. But what I am saying is that you have to understand that the goal is Allah. And regularity. Right? This is a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the most, the most beloved of deeds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are, are, are the regular, even if they're few. So the goal is regularity. Regularity in our dhikr, regularity in our learning. And this, is, this learning is actually a type of dhikr. It's just one more type of dhikr. It's a dhikr of the mind. It's a way in which you occupy your mind with the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq in our, in our earning the reward of the ulama, in being raised with the ulama, the sulaha, the anbiya, and in seeking to please him in the ways that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us to please him.